had a 3X machining center. We had a pump company. Uh, Seguino owns our own pumps. And in the 90s in Schaumburg, we married the two together and we made our vertical machining center a high pressure water machine. Welcome back to MTDCNC. I'm at Sugino today. Now on the MTDCNC channel, we talk a lot about machining and work holding and cutting tools and even machine monitoring and filtration. And Sugino does some of that as well. But today we're going to talk about part cleaning. Now, when I did part cleaning, it was with a hand tool of some sort. Some of them were better than others, or it was some sort of tumbling machine. But learning from you, Sean, spending time with you, standing in front of this JCC machine, I've learned there's a whole new world, almost like an Aladdin. You took me on a magic carpet ride and educated me on what can be done. So would you mind giving a quick summary about what JCC is and what we're standing in front of? Well, that's why we're so glad to have you here today, Tony, is you machining guys, you guys make a lot of problems <laughs> and those problems still need to be fixed. So after machining, you got great geometry and beautiful holes or whatnot but you often leave a lot of chips and debris in those holes and cavities. You leave burrs where you're breaking through with drills and that. And so the end customer, they're like, well, hey, there's still more that needs to be done. So that's where Segino comes in and specifically the JCC to try and target our customer specifications for cleanliness, for deburring and kind of any, anything in between there. But um, be happy to go through this machine for you. Like I said, we're just trying to clean up the messes that you machine guys make. So. Happy to, happy to go through it with you. I definitely made a lot of messes. We can start <laughs> there for sure. So as I'm thinking about this, Sean, I think, you know, some of my parts are pretty easy to do, like a whirly bird thing type of, of cleaning on there. Uh -huh. Is this really focused on some of those internal components? It's going to be a real pain in the you-know-what, guys, but a real pain to get to? Or is it really all-inclusive? Just give us your part. We're going to make it better. Exactly. And you know, the JCC isn't the right solution for everything. It's, it's kind of niche. If it's, you're just looking at getting a bunch of water on a part and you can just rinse it off, you know, there's probably other solutions that are good for you. But the more complex the geometry, the tighter the specifications, that's where Segino really shines. We can come in, we're one of the only CNC type of washers that can go and pinpoint problem areas, whether that's for washing or deburring. You know, you get chips, you know, you make a lot of chips and get them in a blind tap hole. Well, before assembly, who's going to get that out of there? So we're going to go, we're going to blast that out and get you ready for your next step in your process. And, and it all needs done. We don't get a lot of credit for it. We're kind of, you know, the, oh, it's the washer guys back there. But, you know, if we're not right, we take all the blame too. Hey, get rid of those burrs, make sure there's no sediment. And with today's world, these, these specifications from our customers keep getting tighter and tighter. It's a good thing for Segino. That's where we shine. Okay, tighter and tighter, good processes. I think about automotive. I think about aerospace. I think about some medical. Is that where Segino's thriving or do you expand beyond that? Or have I made a mistake somewhere along the way? So typically, and with this product, we have been very heavily automotive. Okay. Uh, high production, um, you know, give us a couple parts and you need to make millions of them. Hey, we'll process them across one of these machines. Oftentimes having to add some type of automation, whether that's robots or gantries or automated conveyors, really, pretty much really anything. Um, but that's, that's kind of where we've been over the last few years with the opening of our tech center here, we're doing a lot more testing uh, on, on different types of parts. Again, some for aerospace, some for medical, some for heavy machinery, things like that, but kind of broadening our scope. Uh, we were always good with the uh, high volume, low mix, and we're getting a lot better now uh, with the automation and that to keep the machine productive to go with uh, high mix, low volume type parts. So there's definitely some growth on that side uh, of the business for us in those other fields, such as aerospace and medical and, and semiconductor and some of those things. For and sure. Sean, I feel honored to be here and learn from you. I have so many questions, as I'm sure the audience does as well. So I hope I can ask the questions to invite you to want to learn more from Sean as well. So when I'm when I'm putting this together in my brain, I think, OK, uh, three axis, five axis machining, three yep. plus two machining. I think of, of water jets and I even throw in a little bit of EDM when it comes to submerged type applications. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of the 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 breed of a machine? Are we doing all of these things inside of these Masaginos? Kind of, you know, and the way we set it up, and it's been brilliantly, in, in my opinion, engineered over the years, and we're on our eighth iteration of this. And we can configure this machine to basically process your part. Sometimes we'll want to submerge a part. 
uh, to get into some complex uh, cavities and create cavitation to make sure we get all the chips out of there. Sometimes we got a tough burr that we got to, so we want that to be open air and put our high pressure on that exact burr and remove it without damaging your part. Um, but the consistency that the CNC allows us to do, um, really, you can't replace it. Again, it's, it's not for everyone, but the people that come in, why we built this facility is to show people what we can do. But it's basically set up, as you're familiar with, call it a, a three axis machining center, um, which is kind of what we had to begin with. We had a three axis machining center, we had a pump company. Uh, Seguino owns our own pumps. And in the 90s in Schaumburg, we married the two together and we made our vertical machining center a high pressure water machine. So it's three axes up on the turret and then we have an A axis. And the way we typically fixture our parts um, is the bottom of our fixture is open. So we can flip the part 180, I can get to the back side with my nozzle configurations, typically one setup, I can get to all six sides of your part, meet your spec and off to the next process. Well, I think you mentioned this just a few minutes ago, but you just now mentioned getting it all done in one setup, right? No, Correct. no op 10, 20, 30, 40, you're obviously immediately saving time, the potentials of making mistakes as well. Uh, but what I wanted to go back to is you mentioned automation. So now I'm doing one part, but I'm yeah. automating it as well. You can automate these cells also? Absolutely. So I would say more than half, I mean, probably 70, 80% of the machines that we sell do get married up to some type of automation. Whether Segino does that for you uh, in our factory in Japan, whether we work with a local integrator, or whether we work with uh, some machine tool builders uh, that we've integrated uh, with their machines and gantry systems and, and robot loads. And um, that's just the way of the world now, right? Everything has to be automated. It is sometimes single part, but what we'll do on that fixture, uh, say if it's a small aluminum manifold, we might put four of those up there. So we might configure our uh, turret to have twin nozzles where we're processing two at a time. Again, a lot of times it's got to be, hey, you've got 30 seconds to do this part, get them in and out. So we have to get creative with it. You know, hopefully we can do uh, what we need to in one machine, but we figure out cycle time and, you know, some of our customers have them lined up and some of them have one or two and that can meet the production. Again, really just part dependent and, and what the customer's looking for. But as far as gantry or robot front door load, automated conveyors, uh, manual pallet slides, whatever we need to do, we're open to it. Well, uh, I wanna get into these pipes in just a minute, but before I get into the pipes, I kind of wanna to talk to the audience and you at the same time going, Sugino has been around for over 80 years. So you're Correct. famous and you're everywhere and you have so many employees. So the industry that knows that they need this type of technology, they know you, you're the leader, right? We know that. But for someone who's watching this for the first time and goes, I didn't know that I needed that. It is only just now sure. learning. What kind of potential customer would I be? We, we talked about automotive already, but if I was just looking and learning and potentially could work with you, Sean, what, what kind of customer or potential customer would I be? So, so, so right now I feel like a, a big uh, growth, especially in the deburring part of it uh, for us, is a lot of people doing hydraulic manifolds. I got to say in the past, probably weren't as good as that because of the, the, the low volume, high mix. It's like, okay, changing over. How do we fixture this? How do we get these different parts in and out of the machine? It's not cheap, so we got to keep it running so you can make your money on it. Um, over the past few years, we've, you know, developed some things that are allowing our customers to do that. So we're kind of opening, you know, before we've been in really high production shops. Now we're getting to more aerospace and guys doing, again, that, that high mix, low volume, and they're seeing the value in it. So there's a lot of people out there that I don't think have seen water deburring or the high pressure cleaning. And again, send us a part and we'll see what we can do for you. No cost to you. And we're gonna show you, hey, this is this is what you could expect from our technology. Who doesn't love the no cost trial, right? And exactly. I think I heard a rumor, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but you have machines out there that are 28 years or more old, still running good. And there was profitability after the first year. Now it's been paying itself back. It, it has. <laughs> I mean, once we first built this uh, product here in the US, it's become our number one product. Incredible. In, in the country. At Segino, this is kind of it, the, the bread and butter of it. So there is old, old machines like that. I wouldn't say that I'd want you to go film them because they're probably not the best looking machines, but they're still making money. So yeah, we're happy about that. Both of us like the ancient ones though. We can't lie, we, oh, we do like seeing yeah. them. And it's still when they're running. Of course, you go in there and you're like, oh wow. Wow, nice. you still exist, you that's amazing. Exactly. So let's jump over to the filtration and the piping system here because I know you have 
different machines. We have one that's off screen right now. It's yep. a little bit bigger than the one, the bread and butter, as you just call it, that's yep. over yep. here. And you have a lot of different sizes based on the components that need to go into them. But some of the differentiators sit in the components here, which almost looks like you're cooking something or baking <laughs> something, but you have a lot of filtration going on. Can we describe those intense and very meaningful uh, personalities of the piping? So from, from my standpoint, it's probably one of the most important things that I get right when I'm talking to a customer about their part and, and cleaning it is the filtration system. Our system, we recirculate the water, it's closed loop. So we're running the same water through our high pressure system. Um, that water needs to be clean. If it's not clean, our pump's gonna break down earlier, our seals, just everything's gonna wear prematurely. And then you're gonna have customers that are like, hey, why, are we, why do we need to rebuild this, replace these seals? So it's my job, my team's job, to figure out the back end um, and, and get that right. What we've got back here, Tony, is a pretty elaborate type system, probably for more of a cast iron application where we've got a paper bed filter um, where we're gonna get most of the, that particles out of there. Then we're gonna go through probably some magnetic type stages and then finally to our bag filters uh, before usually 10 microns, sometimes five, sometimes down to one, again, all application dependent and make sure that we got clean water so you can keep running and you're not rebuilding a pump every four months. We want those pumps to last years. And uh, again, to me, most of you, I learned the hard way. I make sure I get this right. That's the best way to learn. We don't always love it, but the hard way, we all know, it's the best way to That's learn. That's right. Live so learn. as we're closing this thing out, Sean, this, this conversation, where I've learned quite a bit and I appreciate you for that. Are there any messages that you'd like to give to the audience about Sagino or the machines themselves, or even just the relationships, the service and support. I know it's very important to you as well. Is there anything you'd like to lay out for those watching right now who would like to participate and be a part of Sagino? Well, you know, uh, Sagino, again, like you mentioned, been in business for 80 years with our core customers, you know, a lot of OEMs and tier one suppliers, we are in their minds. They think about us, they know us, um, they've been happy with us as a supplier. But again, we're trying to, to get other products and that where we think now, with what we've learned with automation, what we've learned with our technology. We think there's a whole group of customers that maybe have heard of water deburring, heard of high pressure, this or that, but don't know a ton about it. And again, that's why we're saying, hey, if you got something, give us a call, we'll look at it. We might right out of the gate say, hey, this probably isn't for us. You may wanna try this solution and you know, call up this other company. But we're, we're hungry to try things. Uh, we usually get something in, turn it around in a couple of weeks for a customer and then they've got data set that they can say, hey, look, this is what we could expect with this type of technology. Again, it's just more information to them and everybody wants more information. So um, we welcome anything uh, you guys can send us and uh, please do. Our guys are here. I love it, Sean. Good man. Tony, appreciate the appreciate information. You. For everyone watching, yeah, water deburring. I'm still learning about it, but that's why we surround ourselves with experts like Sean so we can continue to learn and continue to grow because manufacturing is everything we make around the world. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we've, well, I think Sean's had fun. I've definitely had of fun course. talking about it, but as much as we've had fun. So thank you all for watching MTDC and Sean. Thank you for having us into Sagino. Appreciate you so much. Thanks for coming out.